how understanding was like Shomer Sap with your medical conditions? And honest to God, it's never come up. Hey guys, this is Tempest from Russell Talk, and I'm reminding you to support Tom Talks Rubbish. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Tom Talks Rubbish, and stand back for another interview. This time, I'm joined by Robert D. Felice from Fightful. So welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to be here. I'm glad to make the rounds. I know you've been interviewing some of the other Fightful people, and I'm glad to be here. So if we take this back to the beginning, where do you first discover wrestling? So that is the most interesting question for me. Because I don't have an aha moment, right? Like I hear all these people, they give their great aha moments. I was at my grandma's, I saw Rock versus Hogan. I saw this, I saw that. Wrestling has always been on mm -hmm. in my household. And it was on because it was cool, but I took it to an, a very obsessive level. And I, I just, I, I fell in love with wrestling from the age of two. Wrestling is my first love. I don't have an aha moment, but I do... I can tell you that it's just been the only thing I've cared about since I was two years old. That's really cool. But what sort of era are we talking about? So uh, I, I was born in 93. So I started watching with the new generation era. So I had this weird kinship for that. Obviously, I followed through the entire Attitude Era. I would say right around the time where wrestling becomes mine is ruthless aggression era because mm -hmm. at that point everything's falling off there's no wcw there's no ecw so i'm the only one really intently still watching raw and smackdown and i really become obsessed and attached right at that point so breaking it down a little bit because there's a lot to unpack there um when it comes to like the the new the new generation stuff that is an era that say the 95 to maybe 94 to 95 era isn't as um well fond of as other eras in other people's eyes yeah. what is something from that era that you feel like not many people talk about and it's like do you slept on this do you know what i mean so i think that if you look at it there's a lot from diesel that is the attitude era. Now you can say whatever you want about Diesel's run, but there's a lot there that I don't think a lot of people touch on. Like he's the first world champion that has to do it, you know, live TV, pay-per-view every month. There, there's a lot that he does that just would become commonplace in the years following. You know, he flipped the bird. He, you know, I believe he threw out an mf -er after he lost the title to Brett at Survivor Series. There's just a lot there that if you look, you can go, oh, the business was changing. You just couldn't see it because it wasn't right in front of your face. Fair enough. What is something that you're like, yeah, people are right to hate on this era? Uh, oh, my God. Well, th that becomes there's so much. Like, you know, there's the occupational gimmicks, the Duke the Dumpster Drosses. There's, look, I, I enjoy King Mabel, but I think there's a lot of, like, Mabel was just not that great in the ring. And, you know, you watch a, like, Diesel and Mabel headlining a SummerSlam, that's not something that's necessarily going to get a lot of attention away butts from and seats, anything. Shall we yeah, say. nothing for butts and seats. But at the same time, there's Shawn Michaels on the rise, which is absolutely amazing. And Razor was always good. So I think it was a mixed bag, but they were getting to a really special place. You talked about there um, briefly about that you were watching during the, basically right up until the ruthless aggression era so did you fall off at any point in between I, like the ruthless aggression era and now 
I have never fallen off. The closest I can say to have fallen off of wrestling is that there would be sometimes I had to say, you know, I'm not going to finish Raw tonight. I'll go to sleep. And the only two memorable times that I've done that were two memorable nights. I missed The Rock returning to announce that he's hosting WrestleMania. And I missed. What, in 2011? Yeah, and I missed the pipe bomb because what? because I said it's Cena and our truth in a tables match. Not really interested. I think I'll go to sleep and I'll, I'll watch it in the morning. And then, of course, you wake up the next day and everybody's talking about CM Punk said Ring of Honor on television. He said Colt Cabana. He, you know, he did so much. He was shooting. And like since that moment, I've never, ever turned away from Raw ever again what is something that you picked up from the pipe bomb with the fresh eyes in the morning that maybe people didn't pick up because they watched it night that night off i think the most interesting thing to me there was maybe i'll go defend it in new japan like he wasn't necessarily saying i hate wrestling i hate you know i never want to be here again i'm just gonna leave with your belt and throw it in the garbage you just like I want to go wrestle. I'll go anywhere in the world. And I think that's at a time where New Japan wasn't what it would become in the Omega Okada era. It was just mm. like, oh, cool. So this guy might go to Japan. And obviously that never came to fruition, but it definitely got a lot of people talking. That was one of those moments where nobody likes wrestling, but everybody's talking about CM Punk in the morning. Yeah, definitely. So moving on to your good self, uh, I, we were chatting off camera just briefly. And for the people that may not know, we have very similar medical conditions, which is something called cerebral palsy, correct? Yes. So for people that may not know how I always hate using the word suffering because we're not suffering. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like but what does your cerebral palsy affect? So I uh, mostly afflicts the lower extremities and a little bit in my right hand. So the only hand that's really good is, is the left one here. But it's, it's a bit of a grind, as I'm sure you all know. But I'm also fortunate in a way that I have a mild enough case that I think if you're just talking to me, you might not catch it. Like, I'm I able know. to do this job. I'm able to, you know, participate in a way that I'm eternally grateful for but yeah there are there are also times where look living with it can be a real pain and you you do have your down days but i think for the most part i've always considered myself very fortunate it's same with me do you use a wheelchair or are you like a um, stick guy so for the most part like getting around the house i'm like fine on my own two feet if i need to go long distances there may be a walker involved but for the most part, I'm getting around on my own two feet. Fair enough. So what is some things, because I've done a video on my channel where I've spoke to some very good friends of mine about what is being a content creator with cerebral palsy like, but what are some things for you, maybe being a content creator with cerebral palsy, the good people watching may not know about? Uh, I think like for me, it takes me longer to do things. So whereas transcribing something might be a little quicker for someone else, it'll take me a minute just because of the CP. But it's stuff like that. It's stuff like just, I think, general lethargy, you know, just general exhaustion might hit me quicker than it would someone else. And also, like, just the little things that you have to take into account because, again, everything just takes that much longer or might be that much more difficult or, like, sometimes... You got to, you know, take advantage of what you got. So I'm lucky enough to have two monitors, which does speed up the process a little bit. But there are times where, like, for example, like, I'm not even sure if I'm, uh, you know, deadpan in the camera because I don't want to be like this. But there are times where I'll just be like, you know, looking around a bit more frequently, let's say, than someone else. But just little things like that. Nothing that's like insanely Hindering, thankfully. Yeah, definitely. But, and this always sounds weird when I ask this question, but what are some good things about suffering with cerebral palsy? Uh, I used that word again. That wasn't what I was trying to say, but what are some good so, things about being afflicted with cerebral palsy? Okay, so, like, 
there are the times where you you do get certain perks with like being disabled like you know the things that you don't even understand when you're younger like the closer parking and the just the way that people treat you and I'll, I'll give the good and bad of this like when you're young and you're afflicted with a disability it's like people will almost bend over backwards for you just because like they but don't it's almost see you. in a patronizing way sometimes as well almost so but that especially as you get older then it becomes like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no i'll be 29 in a couple of weeks i don't need you talking to me like i'm six yeah definitely. like that's that's sort of the the big struggles day to day like that you know that like thankfully because i do i am able to carry myself well enough that people don't see but like i'm talking like off camera i do get a lot of that and it's a bit of a pain in the ass because you're like wait i'm working i'm like fully working and i have like a full-time job i would like to be able to you know go to the store and not be talked to like i'm four like it's yeah. just stuff like that you know i totally agree with you and all of that man say so, yeah uh, i yeah i totally agree with all of that by the way man sorry about that um all good what was i gonna say i do totally agree with all of that but what um how did you i'm always really interested to know how did you connect with like sean ross Sapp and the fightful crew <laughs> so so sean ross Sapp, my first interaction with him i was working for a site called e-wrestling news at the time and i had used the word speculation in a headline it was a, it was a Meltzer article and i used the word speculation and i walk away i come back and another writer is getting into it with sean over the headline that i wrote so i proactively reached out to sean and said hey super sorry but thank you for letting me know and that was it i didn't think anything of it and then about two months later he offered me the gig and i was like it took me forever to answer him because Something I do struggle with is self-confidence. And I was just sitting there like, you know, I'm not sure if I'm cut out for this. So it took me like a good two weeks just to give him an answer of yes. And I've been working at Fightful since August 16th of 2019. And it's been the most eye-opening experience. I have to say, I legitimately think Fightful is the best of the best of the best. Yeah, I agree. And... I, I'm just so fortunate to work with that team. How understanding was like Sean Rossap with your medical conditions? And honest to God, it's never come up. Almost to the point where we're like some. Sometimes I wonder if I should be more forthwith about it because sometimes things will take me a bit longer. But it's yeah. never come up. Sean I'm is super chill. Like I, Sean Rossap is the like he's such a good dude. And honestly, my disability has never been an issue. That's really cool to hear. But like, and yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. But like, that is, there is a fine balance, isn't there? Where you're like, I want to promote cerebral palsy and disability and awareness. But I don't want it to define me. That is something I struggle with at times. So, okay. So like, that's a completely different experience for me because growing up, like now we have these conversations about community and disability and all these things. And it seemed as a positive and not so much in a patronizing way. Growing up, it wasn't that right. Like it was yeah. like, no, you want to be you want to distance yourself from this thing as much as humanly possible. So for me, I, I struggled a lot with like being lumped into that. And I think I, I've often pushed back against it. So now I'm in a place where like, I did an interview with Gregory Iron in January of 21. Oh, I'm pushing for that interview so bad. Oh, I, I might be able to help you out there. Greg, I, I found Greg when I was, I was about 14 years old. I had a friend online and he was like, hey, I know you have CP. I know you're a little bit bummed out about it, but if you do want to consider wrestling, because of course, anyone that's around wrestling yeah. wants to get in the ring. He said, if you do want to consider it, there's this wrestler here with CP. That's how I found Greg. And I think I've been pushing for that interview for 
damn near a decade. And when we did it, it was like this realization of like, yeah, I'm speaking on camera for the first time about being afflicted with CP and dealing with all of those struggles. And it's that was like such an eye opening thing for me to be like, okay, this is just another piece of me and we can move on because representation is a big deal in the modern age. Yeah. But like, I, I don't, I never struggled with that as much because I never just expected to see a mixed race person with CP on TV. Like that was never, you weren't going to find another one of me in the world. So like I never latched on to the discussions of representation and stuff like that until I started, you know, seeing what more was out there and seeing how much that has really impacted a lot of people. Like I've gotten messages from people just saying, Hey, I have CP and I think it's cool that you're doing this. Hey, you know, it's cool. Isn't that, you're that so surreal? I get them occasionally and it's like, wait, I'm just a dude talking to camera. It's yeah. like, like yeah, it is quite surreal. I'm, I'm just a guy. And like, there, cause there's still so much of me that is just a, a dude who is lucky enough to be essentially living the closest thing to his dream job and being able to do it on a full-time basis. And that to me has been the most eye-opening and rewarding part of this experience. And not just John Ross out, I have to give the team at WrestleZone credit because I've, I've worked there for so long. I have to give uh, Tony Mango credit of Bleacher Report. He's, he's the man. He really got me fast tracked into this world because WrestleZone needed somebody a couple of years ago. And that's mm. how I started this whole thing. And I'm just lucky enough that like the disability thing never been, never even been a big discussion. Is this the most you've discussed it since we've been? Um, uh, maybe, maybe consistently. Yes. I mean, like I have obviously, Sorry. yeah, it's all, it's all good. I, I think, I think if this helps, someone you know like that's perfectly fine because maybe there are other people struggling like again it's it was never something that i had to think too much about because it was just all right you're obviously you know working up Mm. against this thing but it's it's super cool how did getting the job at fightful help you to realize that maybe not help you to realize that's the wrong one but help you with like um understanding or like anything's possible with your disability well so i wouldn't necessarily say that anything i would say that it hit a realization of anything is possible i would say that it showed me because like my big thing was i don't want to get a job through a system that helps people disability find jobs those services are great. They're needed in the world. I think that they're awesome. But for me personally, I had to get a job on my on own, your merit. own merit. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as I got the rest of the thing, when Sean came to me, it, it really did affirm that I was doing good at this and I was actually progressing in a way that was you know, worthy of moving on up in the world. And that, that I would say has been the best thing about getting the job at Fightful. Fair enough. As we, where, where do you want to see disability in the media go in the future? This can be wrestling media or uh, traditional media, by the way. Just in general media, I think the more, as we've seen just in the world, the more different voices and different perspectives that you have, the the better you are. So like I saw a disability representation in gaming panel during E3 and it really, it opens your eyes to just how much people are struggling with, you know, a certain situation or how much certain representation would mean to them. So I'd like to see more of it in general, but in a wrestling capacity, you know, I don't know. Like, I think honestly, just the way that the wrestling world is open to the media recently is great. Now I'll I'll shout out another guy, Dominic D'Angelo of he's currently writing for wrestling Inc. He works 
with Conrad and ad free shows. He works with MLW. He's got CP and he's out there killing it. So I mean, like the representation is there. And I think that the only thing I would want to see is yeah, more of it, but more of it in a way that again, is not patronizing and like allows the journalists to shine on their own merit. This is something that I discussed in, I don't know how much content of mine you've actually seen, but I did an interview with two really good friends of mine about how, what being a content creator with CP is basically like. And the next time we do that, I'd love to have you on as well. Uh, I'd be honored. Just to discuss, just to have that other perspective, because like you've made it, do you know what I mean? Oh, thank you. I, yeah, I still struggle with that very concept right there. I've made it, but I would love to be on it. And I think too, like, you know, growing up on different sides of the world, I've seen like, there's a content creator. His name is a uh, CP truth. He's over in the UK. He's killing it. And it's interesting to see how different parts of the globe, you know, Definitely. deal with disability and I was lucky enough to have been born and raised in New York where you have a little bit more of like, there's more out there for kids with disabilities. Mm. But yeah, I, I think that it's very, it, it's very cool to see that this is starting to become something that's openly being talked about and we're getting more voices that aren't just like, yeah, the one happy story. Because I, I was also never a fan of that, too. I, I think they call it inspiration porn, where it's like, you can only talk about this if it's super positive. Yeah. There were a lot of days where I was like, yeah, this is miserable. You know, like, I, you, that, but I'll give you an example. And I keep interrupting you on this one. I do. Uh, you're, you're, you're good. You're good. Like, that I had a day, I think it was about a week ago, where I was like, I just can't get out of bed. Like, I've done so much in the last couple of days. I just can't move. Yeah. It, like, I'm sure you've been there oh, yeah. in the past. And it's like, but I really wanted to make a video about it. But it was like, do I want to upset people and get the, oh, I'm so sorry. Do you know what I mean? Them comments. There, There is a fine line with that, right? Like, because I've had those days, you know, if you're like active for a straight week where all of a sudden, like, yeah, your muscles need time to rest and it does become difficult and i um like it, it does become frustrating because you want to be able to vent about it without like getting the oh this poor guy i think that's another reason i've shied away from someone that heavily. i will say is really good at that is i don't know if you've discovered his youtube channel but anthony from the anthony podcast i have not i'll send you a link if i remember but he does a really fine balance of these being happy in his content. And he'll just put up a video being like, I feel like crap today, guys. Like I love his balance. And this interview has been all over the place. I do apologize, man. Uh, I think that's great. Like, uh, you know, yeah, it is. A, I do work with wrestling, but this is a huge part of my life that I don't often discuss. So I do appreciate the time and the platform. I, I think again, if it, helps anyone then we're doing some good here i definitely agree with you but going back to the restaurant talk as we look at wrapping this up because i do want to be respectful of your time we're going to go into a segment now that i call generic questions Ooh. so those of you that have seen my videos before will know this is where i ask my guests their favorite match favorite pay-per-view favorite superstar favorite tag team and favorite theme song all the time questions that i'm sure robert gets asked on social media quite regularly so now he'll have a place to be like look guys I've answered this. Please go watch this. So what's your favorite match of all time? Oh, so I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you two. My favorite, like, this is my comfort zone match is Shawn Michaels against Razor Ramon in the ladder match. Fun fact, I start every new year as... Which as, one? So I grew up first with the SummerSlam one in 95. But now I start every new year watching the WrestleMania 10 Ladder match. As soon as the festivities are over and I'm back in my place, first thing I do is pop on Sean and Razor. That would have to be my like comfort match. The best bell to bell match I've ever seen personally is probably um, Shawn Michaels Undertaker WrestleMania. That's it's just 
I think 25 or 26? 20, okay, easily 25. I think 25 was much better than 26. 26 is also a masterpiece, but 25, you didn't know what you were going to get. From my personal opinion, and I keep making this about me, I do apologize. I You're love good. 26 only because of the story they tell. And I was so invested in the story, but that's just me. What's your I, favorite? I, I have heard The Undertaker say ad nauseum at this point that the best story he's ever told is the four matches across 25 and 28 with Shawn Michaels and Triple H. And I do think that if it's just the best. I totally agree with you. Favorite pay-per-view of all time? Favorite pay-per-view of all time? SummerSlam 2002. That's quite apt, considering that at time of recording, SummerSlam is this weekend. SummerSlam has always been my favorite uh, event. And I think it being on a Saturday in July is a bit... It, it's a bit disorientating. It's like, very weird, isn't it? Like, but here we are. Honest, in a, we won't discuss in SummerSlam too much just because this is going to be in the can for a little while and I don't want it to be too out of date. Do you know what I mean? Uh, granted, I'll say this. We're in a new era where there's no Vince and SummerSlam's on a Saturday in July and we're, we're living it. Very strange times we're living in as wrestling fans. So, um, favorite tag team of all time? That's a loaded one. Um, okay, I would say I would say present day. I love FTR. I think FTR is just the best in the world. Um, All time favorite tag team. I think I've got to say probably the Eaton and Condre in that express. Favorite um, and then favorite theme song of all time. Favorite theme song. Um, so I think Triple H The Game is the, I think it's the best hype wrestling theme song. What is your thoughts on the Lemmy version at Mania 17? Oh, well, see, I watched this content creator called Trash Theory, and he broke down the Ace of Spades. And in that video, uh, he says that he quotes Lemmy as saying, yeah, I said the eight of spades for years and no one knew. Yeah. So now I wonder if he just butchered the lyrics because he's Lemmy and he's just going to do whatever he wants. I, Baron. Lemmy, Lemmy is the man. I would never say a single bad word about Lemmy, but that is quite the performance. It's quite the funniest thing of all the time, isn't it? And then favorite superstar of all time as we wrap this up. You'll get a different answer on a different day, but right now I'd say... All time, it's Edge. Fair enough. And then as we wrap this up, Rob, where can the good people find you and your content? You can find me everywhere at Dude Felice. That's D-U-D-E-F-E-L-I-C-E. And you can find that on Instagram, Twitter, uh, twitch.tv. There will be a dudefelice.com. Maybe by the time that this is up, I've been working really closely with Kate of Fightful on that. Ooh. It's it's just been really, really cool to branch out in the world as a content creator. And I'm very, I'm very excited to see where the future takes me. I am as well. One of the most underrated content creators out there at the minute. And I'm really you, excited sir. to see what he does in the future. So if you guys like this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Tom Talks Rubbish. Follow me on Twitter at Tom Talks Rubbish. Subscribe to Bodyslam.net wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube for my show of Casty Haynes. The Rest of Watch podcast. And yes, he's a great follow, dude, by the way. Very agreed. And follow the Rest of Watch podcast on Twitter to help us pick a match every week that we are going to watch. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.